I want to make a few observations regarding the idea of reflectivity and what it means for the spiritual search and how it can be thought of as a kind of basic concept for the seeker. So I'm going to start with a uh, traditional Advaita Vedanta idea, which is the idea of the three gunas. Gunas are basically like qualities which pervade everything, and there are said to be three gunas. There's tamas, rajas, and sattva. Tamas is like the sort of heavy, dull, dark aspect of things. It's kind of inertia and weighing things down. Um, rajas is more like activity of various kinds. And then sattva is reflectivity, contemplation. So experience is always some combination of these three gunas or qualities. And for the seeker, the idea is, can you notice the reflectivity of each moment, in a sense? That reflective quality is not to do with the rest of the content of the experience, but is a reflection of the experiencer. That's why it's the reflective quality. It is reflecting the self. The light of the self shines against a particular thought or perception or sensation or memory or desire or whatever it is. And the fact of its reflection, just like the fact of the reflectiveness of an image in a mirror, is to be observed, is to be noticed. That's a kind of variation of self-inquiry, you might say, or just another way of putting it, in fact. Another way of saying the same thing is to say that in every moment, one can say, I am. That I am feeling is the reflective aspect of the experience. It's not the content of the experience, it's the fact that you know it that it shines in the light of your awareness. So the same thing is true with awareness. Awareness is the reflective quality of experience. It is the being quality, the pure being quality of experience. Another way we might, we might put it is, it is the blissful quality of experience but it's a specific kind of bliss. It's an aesthetic bliss. It's the bliss of beauty that can be appreciated regardless of the goodness or badness, uh, meaning the helpfulness or hurtfulness of the actual content in itself, you might say. Well, what do I mean by that? I mean, like, for example, you could watch a war movie, which would, could be about very sad things occurring, very unjust things, very inhumane things, but if the movie is well made, if it's well written, if it's well directed, if it's well produced, if the cinematography is good, if the acting is good, okay, these craft elements that, that portray something, that's in effect the reflective quality of that movie, and it stands for a certain kind of enjoyment of beauty that is compatible with negative emotions. You could be watching this movie and feel anger and feel the injustice and feel the sadness. And yet, woven in and through that would be an appreciation of beauty. And that's the reflective component of your experience of the movie. Brahma rasa, it's said in Sanskrit, the taste of Brahman. Every enjoyment, in fact, that we have is actually a glimpse of this very same beauty. 
it's a glimpse of this reflectiveness. It's just that the reflect that reflectiveness is merely a glimpse because it is sandwiched on both sides by thought. A desire leads up to it, and then it falls off into another desire. So that it's a very, very limited amount of it, essentially. It's like one tiny, tiny, tiny taste of the pot of honey. But in fact, the honey is constant. And so the practice is to train your attention away from the thamasic and rajasic aspects, that is the, the sort of dull, dark stuff of it, or the motion of it, of the experience, to that reflective quality which is constant. So that reflective quality is, it is pure being, it is that blissful beauty, it is awareness, which put together would be the Vedantic or Sanskrit idea of Satchadananda, being, awareness, bliss. And it is the I, the I that you know, is what may be noticed. And so when you, when you look for this reflective quality, of course, you're engaging in self-inquiry. Now, is that the end of the matter? The fact that you just keep noticing over and over again this reflective quality that doesn't go away and that is in some sense there regardless of the content of the experience? No, it's not enough. Because when you actually look for the reflective quality of the experience, what instantaneously happens is that you think you're noticing the reflective quality of the experience, but your mind immediately falls into the content of the next experience. You think you've grasped the reflectivity of it, but when you think you've grasped it, you've actually just grasped another thought or feeling. How do you know? Because when you're aware of something, that thing shines in the reflectivity so when you think you've grasped the reflectivity, you've actually grasped something that shines in the reflectivity that is reflected. You think you've grasped the reflective quality itself, but you haven't. You've just grasped another reflection. And so the one who's actually trying to get to the real reflectivity has to keep refocusing, refocusing again and again and again, noticing each time that the experience of what they thought was reflectivity is actually another reflection. Because there is, as with the eye, as with being, as with any of these words we're using, there's a kind of riddle to this reflectivity. The reflectivity cannot, in fact, be grasped. The real reflectivity cannot be grasped. You are the real reflectivity. The problem is profound, deep mental habits that construct a web of belief and built on that belief, desire and fear that keeps the mind going. And the belief is, I'm an experiencing doing entity. I'm not pure reflectivity. So to, to vanquish this belief, one must notice on what the belief is built. The belief is built on a kind of neglect or forgetfulness of the true reflectivity, which is not a thought, it's not a feeling, and really it's not something that can be noticed at all. We attempt to notice it relentlessly, because when we attempt to notice it relentlessly, we break down the mental habits that sustain the system of ignorance. The system of ignorance, which is the belief that I am an independent, experiencing, doing entity, and all the memory that goes with that, and all the desires and fears that go with that, and they keep the mind moving, quote unquote, outward. All of that is built on the forgetfulness of the true reflectivity. So we bring the mind inward from its preoccupations with the reflections and attempt to 
glimpse over and over again these little flashes of reflectivity. Flashes. Those flashes are not the true reflectivity. They are reflections of the true reflectivity. But if we train our minds away from the reflections and towards even those glimpses or flashes of reflectivity, those reflections of reflectivity, uh, those glimpses will eventually build in strength and power and draw the mind away from the other reflections, change the mental habits, and clear the space in terms of a quiet mind and concentration for the insight that destroys that ignorant belief and thus reveals the true reflectivity that was shining all along. The reality is, of course, the real reality in the end, in the end analysis is that real reflectivity was never hidden. There's only the mistaken belief that it was ever hidden. But that is the end of the process. The seeker must attempt to attune their mind to the reflective aspect of each moment of experience. And that requires a focusing and a refocusing and a refocusing because the mind is inevitably instantaneously drawn out of that reflectivity into a thought of that reflectivity. Some particular feeling or thought that it mistakes and labels as that reflectivity, but which isn't. Because the true reflectivity is what one is. But to understand that, not merely as words, not merely as ideas, but as lived experience, you must train the mind away from various reflections, quote unquote, out there and towards a continuous chase of the reflectivity of your experience as best you can, which is to say the I. It's really many different words for the same thing moving towards the eye, the reflectivity, the awareness. I mean, the eye is really the central concept, the most central concept probably, but any of these words really will do. One is looking for the unchanging among the changing, and then even the unchanging will go because the unchanging is still contrasted with the changing. And the true unchanging is beyond both the relative unchanging and the relative changing. The true reflectivity is both beyond reflection and reflectivity itself. That pair of opposites is itself but a reflection. <laughs>